So I thought I'd do a quick tutorial on ZBrush from Maya Modelers and how you can transfer some of those skills over to ZBrush without um, losing too much. So one of the first things, or the main differences between the two in, in ZBrush, when you draw something like a cube out and it's a primitive object, I'm going to press T to go into edit mode here, shift F so we can see the wireframes. This is a primitive, so it has its initialized parameters like this, where you can change these, uh, height, width, all that kind of stuff. If I want to be able to sculpt on this, however, I need to convert this into a polymesh 3D object. In Maya, pretty much the same thing applies. Cube, create that, um, and you have your same the, the same settings as you have um, in ZBrush. The difference is you can start cutting and extruding and all that kind of stuff in Maya right now. Whereas in ZBrush, you have to hit this Make Polymesh 3D, which will create a new tool here. And then you can now you can start doing all that extrusion and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, when you're modeling with a cube, if you start here and you have nothing and you choose the cube 3D, drag that out, press T to go into edit mode, shift F to see the wireframe. No modeler wants to work on this as a start point. If you look down to your initialize with these parameters here, they kind of don't help you an awful lot. But any object in ZBrush, if you make it a polymesh 3D like we do now, we'll create a new tool. That initialize rollup will change and you'll have the option to convert this into a Q cube, a quick cube. So basically from that, you can choose the resolution if you want something lower to start off with a basic cube. So in Maya, you press three for viewport smoothing, which is like a dynamic preview. It's not actual smoothing, it's just viewport smoothing. So the exact same thing in ZBrush, the equivalent is dynamic subdivision, um, which is here. So that's D for, for dynamic. And if you don't have any subdivision levels, it's going to ask you, do you want to say that, do you want to use this? And you can just say yes to that. Uh, Shift D, we'll turn it back off again, but that's the exact same as Maya number, hitting the number three, turning it on and off. So in Maya, when you want to see your vertice, vertices or edges, um, you basically just click on your object and they're visible to you. In ZBrush, when you want to see your, your faces or vertices, you have to press Shift F or this button over here. So in Maya, you select an object by just clicking on it in the viewport. In ZBrush, you hold down Alt and then you click on it in the viewport. In Maya, you can select multiple objects by holding down Shift. That's not really possible in ZBrush. You have to combine them into one sub tool. So you would merge, merge it down with the layer below it. And then that way you've selected two. If you want to go into solo mode, you just press the solo button. That's the same as the Maya Control 1. So Maya Control 1 will hide or go into solo mode. In ZBrush, you don't really have the option. You can click on one and go into solo mode. Click on another one, go into solo mode. But you can't just make selections on screen of objects, of random objects. In ZBrush, if you choose the Z Modeler tool, BZM, which is just a, basically a different kind of brush, then you can hover over an edge and that will automatically insert an edge loop. Holding down Alt will delete it. So you can add one, add one, Alt to remove it. And um, the same tool also does extrusions. So you can just do that and then extrude. And it will also pop up and connect to existing things and even remove polygons if that's what you're looking for. So effectively your Maya Control E is built into the same tool that actually allows you to insert loops. So in Maya, when you want to stitch edges together you'll use the target well tool and just select and stitch in zbrush if you hover over a single polygon with this same tool turned on the b the z model tool bzm just change the stitch two points and then you can choose either stitch to the start point to the end point or to the midpoint so if we say to the end point i like to make my brush nice and small when i'm working in zbrush so we can stitch here to here and here to here that's pretty much the same as maya it will always retain triangles or quads in ZBrush. That's the only difference between the two. In Maya, you can create an end gone quite easily. So in Maya, when you want to connect edges, you can just select two verts and use the connect, hit enter, um, or using the connect, just click on, using the connect in edge mode, just click on an edge and it will create one on that loop. In ZBrush, if you want to connect two vertices, hover over vert with the Z model tool, press the space bar and choose bridge, bridge and change it from ring to two points and then from there you're basically connecting two points like that and inserting of an edge loop as before is just clicking on an edge and then that will insert a loop deleting faces in Maya you just select them left click select and hit the delete button in ZBrush you hover over a polygon and you use delete and then you can choose either to delete a single polygon or a polygroup 
um, island, which is any island of any given color. So that will delete both of these. Um, and that's up to you how you, how you want to treat that. Uh, in Maya, when you want to close a hole, you'll just select a border or a set of edges and uh, shift right click and fill hole. And that will fill those, but it won't actually fill, it won't actually connect the vertices here. So in ZBrush, if you fill a hole here um, by left clicking over an edge and choose close, you have two options, concave hole or convex hole. Uh, a concave hole will kind of fill in with whatever way it can with triangles. It tends to be a little bit messy, especially on circular objects. Um, whereas a concave, a convex hole tends to be a little bit better because it fills in towards the center for circular objects. Um, but for square objects, you're probably better off with concave. So in Maya, when you want to circularize, you'll select your faces, shift, right click, and say circularize the components, and that will give you a circle. ZBrush is a little bit more awkward when creating rings. Um, you either click on a vertex and choose point, which point you can just drag that out and it will fill those in. It'll terminate these nicely. Um, or if you want to take a specific face selection, you can alt and then drag select on that face selection, select the center point and choose split ring. And then from there, just click and then that will actually circularize that for you. But it does add in a lot of triangles and not necessarily always ideal. So in Maya, if you want to delete something, you just hit the delete button. In ZBrush, it's not that easy. You have to hit this delete button here. You can't just delete in the viewport. Um, deleting of, of objects in Maya or in ZBrush is always done via this button. If you want to delete faces, however, you can isolate some and then you'll have to go to geometry, modify topology and delete hidden. Alternatively, just use your Z modeler brush and choose hover over a face choose delete and then choose what you want to delete, whether it's a single polygon and um, holding down alt will treat everything that's been uh, painted with that alt button down as a single polygon. So you can delete that or you can choose to delete a specific poly group if you have one set up. So in Maya, when you want a cut right down the middle, you'll choose the uh, multi cut tool and press and hold control and shift and that will find the center of those polygons and you'll always find the dead center. In ZBrush, when you want to do that, you hold down shift, you hold down the space bar, choose insert, and instead of a single edge loop, choose multiple edge loops. And then from there, when you click, before you drag too far, it will basically find that as the center one. If you go further than this, it will start deciding, oh, you must want more loops. Um, but if you just do once, it'll always find the dead center. In Maya, if you want to remove an awful lot of uh, unnecessary loops, you'll go to mesh and choose reduce, and you'll apply that. Um, until you find, until it reduces it, the amount that you want. In ZBrush, if you have the same thing, go to edge loop and then scroll down to delete loops and it'll, based off this angle, it will delete those loops. One thing to be careful of is that you don't have poly groups turned on. If you do, there's a good chance it won't work. It'll only work on individual poly groups. In Maya, the channel editor tells you where your position is with both translation, rotation and scale. In ZBrush, go to Geometry, scroll down to Position, and that'll give you your position on X, Y, and Z. Um, your size in ZBrush is very specific because it's, it's used, it's multiplied by a size modifier down here on Export. So uh, generally that size doesn't mean the same, it's not the same as scale in Maya. So you actually don't have rotation and scale that you can adjust numerically as such. In Maya, when you're rotating, you'll hold down J and you rotate in five degree increments. And while you're rotating in ZBrush, you'll hold down, you can, ZBrush, you can press W, E or OR, they'll all bring up the transform gizmo and then just hold down shift and that will snap it in five degree increments and um, which based on whichever axis that you're, you're dealing with. If you want to change the amount of this, you can go up here and under miscellaneous activities, you can change the snap angle here. ZBrush prefers it to be uh, something that is divisible into 90 degrees just because you're nearly always going to want to uh, go to 90 degrees at some stage. So something like 30, 10, anything like that, set the snap angle. And the next time we do this, it'll go up in increments of 30 degrees here, for example. Uh, to see back facing in ZBrush, just go down here to the bottom under the display properties and turn on double sided and that will show you the other side of objects. So if you want to flip the normals, you can use flip, but you probably won't notice something if double is already turned on. So you probably want to turn double off if you're going to do that and then use that to flip the normals. But once you're happy and you know what you're doing, then you can turn it back on again. So in Maya, selecting two objects and going to mesh combine, will will combine the two objects into one. In ZBrush, 
you're just going to go to you'll have your two different sub tools here and you'll merge merge the top one always down to the one below that will merge them in Maya to make a duplicate you just hit Control D that will create a duplicate or Control Shift D uh, in ZBrush it is Control Shift D every time and that will create a duplicate an alternative to that is to just hold down Control and start dragging uh, and that will drag one out for you um, as long as you're in move mode if you hold down Control and you drag and then you let go it will continue to do that in those inc increments as you slide until you let go so on my if you want to edit the pivot you press d and then position it on a pivot or on a vertex or a point or an edge or a face and then press d again to set it to be there in zbrush you press w to go into move mode and then you just literally alt click on whatever point you want it to move to so if i click here it'll do that if i rotate around towards the edge that i'm looking at it will snap to that as well so you can actually choose the direction anytime you all click it will always be on the surface normal but if you're clicking on a face when you click on a, on a vertex you can actually choose which edge to align it to and it will snap to that one of the advantages to zbrush is that in maya and zbrush you can just hover over an edge and insert a loop but in zbrush if you have a circle here of triangles that meet in the middle you can just click and insert an edge loop there in maya you can insert an edge loop anywhere along here but if you try and do it on the inside on the interior it doesn't work you have to select those faces and connect them which is that a little bit more awkward so in Maya you can take a knife tool and basically cut anywhere you like whether it be on a face an edge a point and you create end guns and Maya doesn't really care ZBrush demands that you work on triangles and quads so it tends to look a little bit messier when you're working with it so if you hover over an edge and choose slice mesh and hover over a face and choose slice mesh slice mesh and hover over vertex and choose slice mesh then you can do the same thing where you're basically just kind of cutting anywhere you want to whether it be edges or faces uh, zebrush will automatically crease this because zebrush relies on creasing a lot more than uh, my does for example so it'll it'll crease that um, for you you can turn off that creasing if you don't like it though Another way to cut is using just the sli uh, slice tool. Control and shift will give you different tools here. And you can see that you have slice curve, slice rectangle. Um, so slice curve, you can just control shift and drag out and it will slice that any way you want. And if you want it a very specific place, you can hit alt once and it'll give you a curve and slice that nicely, create new points. Or if you hit alt twice, it'll give you a sharp edge. So you can create points wherever you like. And just by way of wrap up, ZBrush is a sculpting tool rather than a modeling tool. Most of these Z modeler tools, they're they're not as good as the Maya tools. Um, I'll be honest, they're not. Um, they're just small little advantages to them every every now and then. But generally, um, if you're doing actual uh, modeling, modeling rather than sculpting, it's going to be that little bit easier in Maya. Um, generally but you can do pretty much anything that you want to do in, in ZBrush it might just take a little bit longer but if that keeps you in ZBrush rather than hopping out into Maya I think that's the reason that most people start uh, loving these Z-Modeler brushes they basically allow them to continue modeling and sculpting in the one app rather than having to hop out to Maya to just do some basic stuff so um, it's definitely worth learning and definitely worth taking the time to pick them up so hope these tips help um, I know they're not the most fun things but hopefully for Maya modelers who are coming over to ZBrush it helps out a little bit if you have any other tips that you think other people would benefit from please do put them in I'm always um, interested to see the differences between the software and I haven't used Maya an awful lot um, in the last few years so there may be some stuff in there that may have changed slightly all right cheers bye